机构。Hello, I am Teacher Raccoon. Today we're going to look at the power tram from Lesson 3. Here are the components. It uses two line follower sensors to make decisions. It uses 250X planetary gearbox DDM to drive its rear wheels. The same frame is used to hold the front wheels of the ball roller. We'll use rubber tires to increase friction, so the movement of the car will be more accurate. Now, let's put this model together. This is the powered tram. There are two line following sensors below. The ball roller and two tires can support its main body. The two line follower sensors will detect the black lines on the ground. Then it sends a signal back to the AI control box. Then the AI control box sends a command to the two motors. After the model is complete we can start programming. OK, let's start writing the program. First, click board. Then add the use Wi-Fi control web AI do block. Make sure that the device ID of your AI control box matches the one above. In this program, we use two concepts, which are variables and functions. Let's take a look at the variables first. This model uses two variables. Let's create the first one. The name of the first variable is PWM. This controls the power of a motor. We use a variable setting to define the rotation value of the two motors. The second variable is called on, which is used to govern the power to the tram. We can set this using 0 and 1. These are really fundamental aspects of the model, so we set these first. Add two set variables to blocks. One should be on and the other is PWM. Let's set the speed of the motor to 30. Change this here, 0 to 30. Copy the block and then change the value to zero. These two values are set first. Click extension so you can add the additional number 1206 AI educational block functions. After you've added this, you can find the correct programs for the motors. Now we are going to instruct our two motors to stop. Add two DDM motor stop blocks. The motor has two pins. The pin on the right is pin E. The pin of the motor on the left is pin A. The pins must be selected correctly so that you can control motors A and B. We turn the motors off before anything else to prevent accidental activation. Next, we'll use the button on the AI control box to start the powered tram. One is L and the other is R, which will be used for the open and close functions. Click the button to add when the button is pressed, do block. And then copy two blocks. Now, when the R button is pressed, 
set the variable to zero. And when the L button is pressed, set the variable to one. The R button is configured to stop, and the variable zero means stop. Variable status one tells the control box to commence operation. Next we need to add clear LCD views. To make everything is blank to begin. After clearing, add the LCD display text block. Change hello to stop, so the LCD screen will display stop. Copy the block. Then change stop to go. OK, now let's confirm the current program. If the R button is pressed, the car will stop, and its screen will display stop. When L is pressed, the variable becomes 1. The LCD will show go, and the device will start. Now we can write a program to make the device move, and turn left and right. When the car is moving, the program will be deciding whether to turn left, right or go straight. Click loop and add the repeat forever, do block. This will make sure it doesn't go forward once and then stop, it should keep moving. Next click logic to add the if, do block. Then add the equal block. Now, click variable. And it will add the variables program block. So add the on block into the space on the left. Copy the zero value block into the space on the right. This is how the program runs. Why do we need to set variable on, so it's equal to one? Because then we have to press this button before it will execute the program. If we don't press the start button, the device will wait for our instruction. That's why we call it stop, to make it easier for us to control. Okay, let's write the following program where variable on is 1. Add another if, do block. Add an end block first. Then copy this block. Put two equal blocks into the space. Now we are going to write the program sections for move forward, turn left, and turn right. We will have three possibilities. First I'll use this presentation to explain the principles of our powered tram. This is a simple powered tram. The left line following sensor is P8. The right line follower sensor is P9. The left motor is motor A. The right motor is motor E. These are their object identifier names. First, let's write the program to go straight. In what situation will it go straight? Well, if the black line is in the middle of the two sensors, the powered tram will go straight. If you've already used the number 1269 micro a bit, this will be familiar. And you'll remember that the line sensor can't see the color black. If it senses the floor, the value will be zero because zero means something is detected, and one means nothing is detected. It'll move forward if the car doesn't detect the black line and detects the floor. Now, if the line detector sees the floor, the value is zero. Let's go back to the website. So, how do we write the program to go straight? Click Gigo and add the git p0 value block. We have two sensors, so copy this block again. The left line sensor is P8. The right line sensor is P9. Make sure that both values are zero. It may seem complicated, so let's discuss why we do it. When the button is pressed, it starts detecting. 
If both sensors see the floor, the device will go straight. How do we tell it to go straight? We can use the functions. What do the functions do? A function is a program that we can write like this. But we can only let it do the action at a certain time, and not at others. A bit like a package. So, to begin, we create four functions. The first is Go. The second is Stop. The third is left. The fourth is right. So there are four functions in total, go forward, stop, turn left, and turn right. We'll write these four programs later. After we specify these functions in the program, we can click functions to find the four blocks, go, left, right, stop. Next we'll write the go program. If both line sensors give a zero value, the go function will execute. We'll write the go program later. This is just the initial situation. Next click the blue gear and add the else if block below. For now, we'll look at the second situation, turn left. We can copy these blocks to save time. Let's look at the turning principle of the device. How does it turn left? If the car skews too far to the right, we need it to turn left. That means the right motor must go forward. And the left should go backward to compensate. That way it will stay on the path. The turn left function is the opposite and executes when the device is too far to the right. The P8 sensor will detect the black line. But because the line sensor can't see the color black, the P8 value is 1. So the control box assumes the sensor is not seeing anything. P9 is still at 0 because it is still on the side of the floor. Let's go back to the program. When it needs to turn left, the value from P8 will be 1 because the left sensor detects a black line. Conversely, the value from P9 will be 0. Click Functions to add the left block. Next is the third situation. Add an else if block and copy the conditional statement blocks. Turning right is the opposite instruction to turning left. P9 will detect the black line, and the control box will think nothing has been detected. So here, we change the 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. Add the right block. Once you get the hang of it, you'll start to see the similarities. Next is the stop program. Click the blue gear to add an else block. Pull it in to add the stop block. After this is finished, we'll run over the whole program again. First we set two variables. One is power and the other one is a variable. We set the stop motor instruction first. Then we set two buttons. Where R is a stop button, and L is a start button. We also added two LCD screen blocks, so we know which state it is in. Pressing L will change the variable onto 1, executing the program. If variable on is 0, the program will not run. Then let it repeat the judgment, and check which state it is in. We have four situations, go straight, turn left, turn right, and stop. These programs will execute depending on what the sensor sees. If there is no black line, it will stop. 
The Yeltsin here describes what happens if the variable is not 1. So, there are many situations where the variables will be 0, and this will stop the program. When you press the stop button, that'll also execute the stop command. That's all the parts of our program. Now let's finish up the program functions. We have four functions, so let's start with the simpler ones. First is stopping the device. We can copy these two DDM motor stop blocks. So when it wants to execute the stop function, it will execute these two programs. This is a basic function concept. That completes the stop function. Next is go straight. Let's look at another presentation to see how to go straight. Both wheels have to turn forward. That means the motor on the right should spin clockwise. And the motor on the left should spin counterclockwise. You might be wondering why. Let's check look at the model. When the right wheel moves forward, its motor rotates clockwise. But when the left wheel moves forward, its motor rotates counterclockwise. So, motor E is clockwise, but motor A is counterclockwise. Let's go back to the program and write the code to go straight. Click Ego to add two blocks. One is DDM motor, pin it clockwise. The other is DDM motor, pin a speed. We don't need to use variables for power. Because go straight is a simpler program. The variable PWM is used for turning left and right. So we just need to change the value to 30. Next, click loop and add the waiting one second block. So it has a short wait time. This will let it move forward a bit. Here we can set the value to 0.0005 second. Okay, Motora needs to rotate counterclockwise. Copy the direction, speed, and weight blocks to the program section of Motor E. Change pin A to pin E. Now, let's go back to the presentation. To move forward, Motor E needs to rotate clockwise. So, change counterclockwise to clockwise. That completes the motor settings. Remember that motor A rotates counterclockwise, and motor E rotates clockwise. Finally we'll add a set variable to block. This part fixes the variable PWM to 30, which prevents it from affecting the other programs. This is the complete Go function. Now let's examine the other functions, turn left and turn right. Let's write the turn left function first. Click variables and add the variable increased by one block. Change the variable to PWM. What does this mean? It means the PWM variable starts from 30 and then continues to increase, 31, 32, 33, but we don't want it to increase forever. So click logic and add the if do block. Copy this block and delete the other part, only keep the get p8 value is equal to zero block. Change get p8 value to a pwm variable. Change the equal to greater than or equal to. And change the value from 0 to 80.
What does all this do? It means that it will start at 30, but 80 is the maximum value. So it will keep increasing until it meets the condition greater than or equal to 80. If the PWM reaches greater than or equal to 80, it continue at 80. These are two common concepts found when using variables. One is to keep increasing by one. The other is to set a specific maximum value. This will ensure that the PWM value remains between 30 and 80. Next, copy the two motor blocks. Let's write the program of motor E first. Motor E rotates clockwise. Let's check the presentation again. Right, motor E rotates clockwise. If you want the car to turn left, motor E has to move forward. Motor A on the left has to go backward to make the entire device turn left. Motor E goes forward because it rotates clockwise. And motor A goes backward because it also rotates clockwise. That's the basic idea behind this program. This power value needs to be removed and changed to PWM. A very interesting thing happens when we swap it to PWM. The power value is not fixed. At the beginning, the power value will be 30. And then it will slowly increase to 80 over time. So the maximum power of motor E is 80. Next, copy the waiting 0.005 seconds block from above. Copy these two motor blocks again. Change pin E to pin A. Keep the clockwise movement. Here we don't need a PWM variable, we just fix it at 30. But why does motor E only need a set variable PWM, when motor A does not? Well, the reason is actually very simple. When the device is moving, the biggest problem is that the motor power output may not be enough. When it doesn't have enough power to rectify its course, it may veer off the route. So the idea is simple. When there is not enough power, it will keep increasing the power. Only 30 at first, then up to 80. So, the course corrective force must be greater than regular forward force. That makes sure it stays in the middle and goes straight. So this program will increase power and push the device back on track when there is not enough power. This is why we use the variable PWM. Now we can directly copy the left program and convert it for use on the right. Their principles are similar. So none of the previous program need to be changed. We just need to set the pin position and directions to the opposite values. Pin E goes to pin A. Below is pin A to pin E. Now the motor does the opposite. Remember that both of them rotate counterclockwise. The left wheel goes forward and the right wheel goes backward. So both directions are counterclockwise. Basically they are complete opposites. Let's check it again. The maximum value of the variable PWM is 80. Then motor A rotates counterclockwise. And the speed is variable PWM. Now we're ready to send the program to the model. One last review. First, we add two variables. Stop two motors. Use the right and left buttons as start and stop commands. Then there's the four functions for the four actions. Because I just created the right function, I need to add it again. 
If the car is in the middle, it will execute the go function. Both motors rotate at 30 power. The second situation. If the left sensor detects the black line, it will execute the turn left function. Then the power will increase, bringing the device back to the middle. The third situation is to turn right, and the speed of motor A is governed by this variable. The last situation is stop. When I press the R button, the variable becomes zero. That executes the stop function. These were all the programs we need. Let's send the program to the device and see it in action. Let's start the test. First we see stop on the screen. The right button makes it stop. Once I press left button, it executes the program. Let's start it now. You can see when the car detects a black line. The car returns to the correct position. It's now rapidly executing the three commands we described for it. This was the powered tram from lesson 3. Thank you for watching.